Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical clusip rotation and the surgical trainees as well. I promise you will become competent in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. Today in this episode, I am going to discuss about the mind map in hydrocele. So this is a shorter version of already I made a, 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 a video on hydrocele, a longer version. Here I will be discussing mainly the important points in hydrocele using mind map. So this mind, this hydrocell comes under scrotal swelling. One of the scrotal swellings is hydrocell. So you must know what are the different causes for scrotal swelling. Broadly, you can divide it into acute painful swellings and chronic painless swellings of the scrotal swelling. Acute painful swellings are tars and testis, acute epididymoarchitis, and tars of testicular appendages. The chronic painless conditions are hydrocele, epididymal cysts, spermatocele, chronic epididymocytis, testicular tumor, and varicocele. So apart from knowing how to diagnose the hydrocele, we must know how to rule out the other possibilities, how to differentiate hydrocele from the other possibilities like epididymal cysts, spermatocele, testicular tumor. So all these things you must know. This is what I am going to highlight in this video. So another important thing is the diagnostic algorithm. The moment you come across a scrotal swelling, you have to do three things. You have to find out whether you are able to get above the swelling or not. Can you identify the testis and epididymis separately? That also you have to evaluate. And then, if, um, <clears throat> if the swelling is transeliminant or not, that also you have to see and whether the swelling is tender or not. Suppose if the swelling is not confined to the scrotum, it is not just scrotum alone, it is an inguinoscrotal swelling. Then, if the patient is also having cough pimples, the swelling is reducible, testis is palpable separately, and it is an opaque swelling, then we are dealing with a case of hernia. Suppose the swelling is not confined to the scrotum okay, but no cough impulse here also is not reducible. Testis is not uh, palpable separately and it is transeliminant. That means it is hydrocele, but the only thing is the infantile hydrocele where you cannot make out the upper border because it extends up to the internal ring level. Okay, this is the swelling. Yeah, mimics like, okay, hernia, but it is not reducible, no cough impulse. Okay, suppose if the swelling is confined to the scrotum and the testis and epididymis is not separately palpable and if the swelling is opaque, and not tender. Probably we are dealing with chronic hematocele, gamma, <coughs> or a testicular tumor. If the swelling is opaque and tender, then probably it is tars and testis, uh, severe epididymocytis, or acute uh, hematocele. <coughs> Suppose if the swelling is um, uh, Testis and epididymis is palpable separately and if it is transeliminant, we are dealing with the epididymal cyst. If the swelling is uh, opaque then and not tender, maybe it is a testicular tumor and if it is not, it could be tuberculous epididymis also. If it is tender, it is acute epididymocytis. 
So this diagnostic algorithm is very important to clinch the correct diagnosis. So this is the actual mind map. So you have to, in all the uh, clinical condition, you have to think of this is etiopathogenesis, etiology and pathology. So it could be either defective absorption because that is called the primary hydrocele or it could be excessive secretion because of some underlying disease. This happens in secondary hydrocele. For example, in, uh, in uh, testicular malignancy. Or this could be lymphatic obstruction because of filariasis. Sometimes it is the pattern processes vaginalis or congenital hydrocele. That is the uh, reason. So this is etiopathogenesis. And what are the different types of hydrocele? This could be congenital, infantile, funicular, encysted hydrocele, vaginal, bilocular, and hydrocele of the hernial sac. So these are the different varieties and in the longer version of the video, I have also shown a picture to, uh, to define all these things. So this is only for quick revision and if you have already read all those things, easily you can recollect. And coming to the history or symptoms, patients will be having big painless swelling in the scrotum, maybe one side or even both sides of the scrotum but the swelling is not reducible. Coming to the signs, there is no cough impulse. Yet above the swelling is possible, you are able to feel the upper border of the swelling yeah, and you, you should be able to feel the spermatic cord also. The, the swelling is because it contains fluid, fluctuation is positive and the swelling is also brilliantly transluminal. Testis is not felt separately because it is vaginal hydrocele. Diagnosis is usually clinical. You need not do any special investigation to prove your patient is having a hydrocele, but in doubtful cases, you can do ultrasound. Coming to the treatment, if it is a very large hydrocele, you can do lots of operation. This is incision and aversion of the, sorry, uh, in large hydrocele, you have to do jabulase operation, which is incision and aversion of the sac. If it is a smaller hydrocele, we have to do what is called plication of the sac wall. And Sarma and Javaris is not, nowadays we are not doing it much. Coming to the treatment algorithm, if it is hydrocele, you have to think whether it is communicating or non-communicating. Communicating means it is congenital hydrocele. Indication for early surgery, if it is a congenital hydrocele, if the patient is also having any testicular pathology and associated inguinal hernia, then only we operate immediately. Otherwise, usually hydrocele, we won't operate at birth. Usually, if it is not having any other pathology, ob observation during the first uh, 12 to 24 months of life. You need not do anything. And majority of these patients, spontaneous resolution will happen due to the fluid absorption. If it is persistent even after two years, then okay, you have to consider uh, the uh, surgery that is nothing but herniotomy and better to explore the contralateral side also in case of any pathology or intraperitoneal fluid collection. Suppose if the hydrocele is non-communicating, this is common in adults patients. Indication for surgery is if patient is having pain and very big size, that is disturbing size or sensation of heaviness. Okay, you can, you can do surgery. If it is encysted hydrocele, hydrocelectomy of the cord, that is what it's called. Hydrocelectomy of the testis if it is a large, thick-walled hydrocele, you have to do, that is the incision and then excision of the hydrocele sac and aversion of the sac. This is the jabulase operation. If it is a medium size or very small size, the, uh, I mean, hydrocele, then you can do pl plication sutures. You can put, this is what is called large operation. So this is the treatment algorithm, how to manage hydrocele. 
So this tabular column is very, very important for differential diagnosis of scrotal swellings. See, in this column, you are seeing all hydrocele, epididymal cyst and spermatocele, varicocele, testicular tarsal and epididymocytis, and testicular carcinoma. And in this column, you are seeing what is the ETO pathogenesis. In this column, symptom, here signs, here diagnosis, that is various investigation you should do, and here it is treatment. So what you have to do, you have to compare and contrast the various diagnostic features. Hydrocele, what is the etiology? You have to see. Epididymal cyst and spermatocele, what is the etiology? Varicocele, what is the etiology? Testicular tarsal, what is the etiology? Testicular carcinoma, what is the etiology? So you have to compare and contrast etiology-wise the various conditions. So you have to do what is called vertical reading. You have to read Normally, we read horizontally. Here, you have to read vertically so that you should be able to identify what is the difference between hydrocele and epididymal cyst as far as the ET of pathogenesis is concerned. Like that, you have to read all these columns vertically. What are the symptoms wise? What is the difference between one condition? Uh, I mean, what is the difference between hydrocele and other conditions? You can easily find out. So you have to do this vertical reading. I request you to pause the video and you can uh, read all these features thoroughly. This is a ready reckoner. You can easily clinch the diagnosis by using this uh, tabular column. This is very important. I will be in, in this uh, mind map videos. I will create this tabular column for all the problems like total swelling, groin swellings, obstetric jaundice for all these things. I will create this tabular column for the differential diagnosis so that it will be very useful for the viewers to clinch the correct diagnosis. And this is very good for fast revision. That is the purpose. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you think that these videos are very useful, kindly like, subscribe to this channel and share these videos in your social media. Kindly click the bell button also to, <coughs> to get notified regarding my latest uploads. If you want to see the larger version, kindly click the end cards that will appear here now. So you can click that end card. You can watch the larger version of the hydrocele as well as the playlist of the scrotal swelling. Both I recommend you to watch that also if you want to <coughs> know more about it. So thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an, yet another episode. Until then, bye-bye.